Hello, welcome back to my network. We're here at Beaver Creek in Colorado, and I'm joined with James Anderson, the CEO and chairman of Wanawatu Silver. James, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, just those less familiar, just brief company overview, if you don't mind. Uh, Guanajuato Silver mines silver and gold uh, in Mexico, in central Mexico, primarily in the, uh, the mining district of Guanajuato. Uh, but part of our recent acquisition, we've expanded that a little bit and we're mining in Durango State as well. Awesome. Um, just if you don't mind, capital structure and sort of shares outstanding, cash in the bank, that sort of stuff. Sure. Uh, we've, got, um, we've got about a $100 million market cap uh, that uh, incorporates about... Uh, uh, about 300 million shares uh, multiplied by 35 Canadian cents. Awesome. Um, just obviously, you're, you're a fairly new company in a way, but you're, you're in production. You've got quite a few producing mines, a few more coming online, big expansion opportunities here. Tell us, how has this started? Uh, how, it's, it's fairly new, right? So maybe you can just give us a, a brief history. Yeah, well, um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to, to do that. It, it, it is a, uh, we like to call ourselves Mexico's fastest growing uh, silver mining company. Um, about oh, a year ago, we got the opportunity to buy the El Cubo mine and milling comp complex from Endeavor Silver. Uh, we managed to put that back into production in about four months' time. And then just about six weeks ago, we put together a, a transaction with Great Panthers. We bought all of the Great Panthers' Mexican mining assets. That includes three mines, two production facilities. So we now have five mines, three production facilities. Uh, we'll be uh, at a run rate of about 3.4 million silver equivalent ounces of production per year by December. And we plan to be ramping up to between five and six million silver equivalent ounces by December 2023. So uh, uh, everything about the company is uh, very swiftly moving and very swiftly growing. If you don't, if you don't mind, I, mean, I wouldn't mind actually going a bit more into the projects. Sure. Um, maybe you could just run through them and sort of what their production outlook is looking like and, and really why you decided to actually acquire these things. Sure. Um, well, I think... Um, why we uh, started to, to acquire uh, projects in the Guanajuato region. Uh, the, the Guanajuato mining camp is a 450 year mining camp, year old mining camp. Um, it, it is one of the best places to find silver and gold on planet Earth and has been for a long time. Uh, however, in you know, recent years, and by recent years I mean you know, the last 30, 40 years, the, the camp has been divvied up into a number of different um, owners. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I first looked at that a couple of years ago, I thought, well, that is a recipe for consolidation in the mining business. So we got the opportunity to purchase El Cubo. Uh, the El Cubo plant can produce, can uh, process about 45,000 tons of material per month. We're currently uh, pr pushing about 36,000 tons per month through there. About 30 of that comes from the El Cubo mine, or the two mines, Villapando and Santa Cecilia. That's part of the El Cubo complex. And then, again, just six weeks ago, we purchased these other two mines in Guanajuato. One of them is San Ignacio. Within seven days of us closing that acquisition, we were trucking material from San Ignacio for processing at El Cubo. So the whole thing, the whole rationale is a hub and spoke mining operation, taking relatively small mines, right, from a 21st century standpoint, but several mines and processing them at one or two uh, processing facilities within the area. Okay, awesome. Um, in Guanajuato, the, I think, four mines you have there at the moment, right? Correct. Can you just give us a bit of a flavor of the size of these mines and the grade and, and sort of how long these, these might actually go on for? Yeah, okay. Well, it's, it's tough. They're all different. They're all unique. Uh, I, I don't know if we, we want to do too deep a dive on each one of them, but uh, let's start at Kubo. Um, in all categories, so let me wave my arms a little bit, we've got about 27 million silver equivalent ounces in, uh, in, in, in all indicated uh, and inferred and measured categories. All right? um, so that mine has been in operation for 120 years, right? virtually nonstop. So although, because these are narrow, uh, high-grade epithermal systems, you generally don't get much more than four or five years of resources in front of you, uh, we, we have great confidence that these mines will continue to go on for a long, long time. On the other side of Guanajuato is San Ignacio. Uh, the San Ignacio uh, deposit that we have uh, totals about 9 million um, silver equivalent ounces. Again, I'm just waving my arms here in all categories. So caveat, caveat, caveat if anybody's uh, looking at that. Um, but uh, very good grade. Grade there is better than Kubo. Uh, the, um, the resource grade is about 400 silver equivalent. Um, and that is part of the La Luz 
trend. Uh, that's really the old, when the Spaniards first found silver and gold in the area in the 1540s, it was in that trend that they first found it. So do I think that that's going to be going on for a long time there? Yes, I do. And then over to Valenciana. Valenciana is part of the, uh, the Veta Madre, or Mother Vein, uh, complex. It's a regional fault structure is what it is. It's a regional fault structure that's been intruded by a really powerful, long-lived epithermal system. Um, the, the mines of Valenciana that we now own, in, in parts of the 1700s, it was producing 25% of all of the silver on the planet. So it's got an, a, a, a storied history. Um, different estimates, of course, you know, because you know, we're talking about over 400 years. But most estimates would tell you that, that uh, the Valenciana mines have produced about 2 billion ounces of silver. Is there more to find? Oh, yes, there is. Uh, and I can tell you that we will bring the Valenciana mine back online in, terms, in production just within the next number of weeks. There is a plant that's there as well called Cata. Um, the Great Panther had some problems with their, with their tailings and getting uh, an expansion of that properly permitted. Uh, we don't feel that that is going to be a problem for us and we feel that we can uh, bring the plant back into production almost immediately because we're going to be backfilling parts of the mine. It's a 450 year old mine so there are ample areas underground, uh, voids, that we can fill and put the tailings right back underground. We do not need extra permitting to do that. The other mine in the area that we have, uh, was really our first asset in the area, is called El Pinguico. Uh, Pinguico has a really cool history all of, uh, by itself. Uh, 110 years ago, it was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It was the highest grade gold mine in the, in the area. For us, it, it is an excellent exploration project. Uh, we'd love to spend a little bit more money there, but obviously we are moving very, very swiftly uh, in other areas, and we do have to be um, uh, cognizant of uh, how much money we're spending here, there, and everywhere. I should now jump uh, for your listeners to the other mine that we bought with this transaction. Remember, three mines, two processing facilities that we buy from Great Panther, all for the low, low price of just $14.7 million. You can't do that anywhere. You just can't do that anywhere. Um, Topia in Durango. Uh, it too is a, is a well-known mine. It's been in operation mm, virtually continuously for 70 years. Uh, narrow veins, but very high grade. The resource there is about 20 million silver equivalent ounces and at a grade of plus or minus one kilo of silver equivalent uh, per ton. Right? Um, there's also a number of different uh, opportunities in the Topia area to do a hub and spoke uh, operation like we've got going on in Guanajuato. That may take some time, but there's a number of different smaller producers in the area uh, that we can do business with. Awesome. Uh, going back to Guanajuato. Um, you were talking about consolidation in the region. Who else is in the region at the moment and, and what opportunity is there for further consolidation? So we now own about 60% of the district. Okay. And we're, you know, we're very proud of that and uh, we think that that's a, it's an opportunity that, that has not presented itself to others you know, for many, many years. Uh, about 30% of the rest of the district is owned by Fresnillo. And if, if your listeners don't know, Fresnillo is the largest silver mining company in the world. Mm -hmm. They've got about a $6 billion uh, market cap. The assets in Guanajuato, from Fresnillo's point of view, may not move the needle for Fresnillo. And then the, the, their assets in Guanajuato are not producing right now. From our perspective, on the other hand, they could really move the needle. There's lots of resources that are established there. Um, can we do something with them? It's a big company. Getting big mining companies to move is difficult. Um, but I would say that our exclusively Mexican team, 100% of the people who work for us in Mexico are Mexican nationals. They're very experienced. Uh, we have a very good dialogue with the larger company. Uh, so if anybody can get something done with them, it's us. Okay. Um, obviously, a lot of the... What I'm trying to get my head around at the moment is um, a lot of the assets you've, you've purchased, um, why weren't the other operators able to make it work? How, how, how are you able to get these and then actually convert them yourselves and really turn them into profitable mines? So each of the assets has a, has a different story and a different re reason. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to... Um, well, in, in terms of, of Great Panther, we bought their assets just six weeks ago. That company's bankrupt today. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do think that it's uh, perhaps illustrative of you know, some of the, the uh, managerial challenges that, that they've had. However, from a, on a more positive note, 
Well, we can take all of these assets as, as we, we're cobbling together, cobbling them together within this district, and we certainly have many, many synergies that the other companies did not. Um, our president and uh, head of all Mexican operations is Ramon Davila. Ramon has the best CV in Mexican mining. Uh, he is the past chief operating officer and on the board of directors of First Majestic. Um, he was one of the, the founding uh, partners of that company. He took that company from having two employees in Mexico to 4,000. From, no, from zero production to 12 million silver equivalent ounces per year. That kind of managerial expertise with these types of mines is vital and we've got the best in the business. What's the, uh, currently obviously you've got quite a few different processing facilities, which is obviously a great position to be in. Um, what's, the, what's the max, what's the, what's the capacity at the moment? If, if, how, how big could you get? Uh, we, can, we can do 45,000 tons a month at Kubo. Uh, we'll call it 30,000 tons a month at, um, at uh, Cata Valenciana. Uh, so we're up to 75,000 tons a month. Uh, the, the plant at Topia is much smaller, but it's so high grade that it doesn't get in the way of you know, being uh, very productive. Um, but we'll, we'll, I think we'll be able to expand that plant over the next 12 to 18 months so that it can do 15,000 tons a month. So then we're at, at 90,000 tons a month. Each, each of the assets is different, but, but you know, what we were just looking at, you can, you can see all very good grade. Yeah. And with the current portfolio of assets you have at the moment, obviously you're talking um, with, the, um, with the other asset in the north, you were talking about potentially having other feeders into that. But with the assets that you have, say, in Wanawata, do you have enough, um, do you have enough capacity to, to really ramp up to that full scale, do you think, at the moment? Or do you, do you need to acquire more mines? Mining capacity? As in processing capacity. Or, or, okay, so in terms of processing capacity, uh, the answer is yes. Um, Kubo was built too big for the El Kubo mine originally, uh, so it, it can produce 45,000, it can process 45,000 tons a month. The Cata plant can, can do, well, I said 30 earlier, but really the, um, the nameplate capacity is 36,000 tons a month. Now, can we find enough ore to pass through there? I think we can. And I think we can because uh, not only do we, do we have the, the mines at Kubo uh, and San Ignacio, but also Valenciana. Just two years ago, three years ago maybe, uh, San Ignacio and Valenciana were both producing about 15,000 tons of mineralized material to put through the plant. So all in all, yeah, I think we can get pretty close. Um, but there, you know, I, I don't want to take away from the other part of your question, which is, you know, are there other opportunities uh, to process material? Um, our, our friends at Fresneo certainly, but there are also in a, in, a, in a mining camp that's 450 years old, there's all kinds of different, you know, old deposits, little deposits, big deposits, old tailings facilities from the you know, from the 1940s, from the 1840s, and from the 1740s, right, that, that we can do business on uh, going into the future. I guess, uh, just to try and finish this up, but I mean, what does this company look like, say, 12 months, 24 months down the line from here? What, what's the overall strategy, and where, what's the goal that you're trying to get to? Well, I think the, uh, the we put out a news release about a month ago uh, about the month-on-month the -on -month, um, ac acceleration of silver equivalent production from Kubo, where we go over a six month period, we go from 85,000 ounces a month to 100, 144, right? So, so we've shown that we can grow these, these assets um, internally um, and, and organically. So I think that that's gonna continue. Um, we talked about 3.4 million silver equivalent ounces as a run rate by December of this year and five to six million silver equivalent ounces um, within 14 months, let's say, by December of 2023. So where does the company go from there? I think that once we achieve that, um, further incremental growth from the assets that we have will be somewhat limited. Mm -hmm. um, but we are a company that continues to grow very, very quickly. There are all kinds of different opportunities in Guanajuato, but also in Durango and in other places in central Mexico. Uh, we've shown with the Topia acquisition that we're not stuck in, in Guanajuato. We, you know, we can expand our horizons just a little bit uh, from there. So potentially a bit more growth through acquisition, say, in the next 12, 24 months. Once, yes. Yeah. Might not even have to wait that long.
things in the pipeline? Uh, well, you know, we, 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 all, we only completed this transaction six weeks ago, so yeah, give us a few more weeks to, uh, to get our feet on the ground. No, but James, I really appreciate the update. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers.